Greetings everybody, it's Rob and I'm back with another Foundry Pathfinder 2nd Edition video. This one is the second in my series about playing Foundry with a brand new game, brand new kind of intro to Pathfinder, intro to Foundry, and more specific kind of like a GM prep type series. Now I have actually recorded a similar video of this previously, but I had to reshoot it. You may have noticed in my last video as well that the image was kind of a bit cropped a bit and kind of moved over behind me. So there was this large like black like space over here and then part of it was cut off on the side. I didn't notice it in the first video cause nothing was really on that side to be cut off. But in this video when I was going over it, there was a lot of, of information that was being cut off from it. So I had to reshoot it for this one. And this one, we're gonna be talking about making a character in Foundry itself. So with that, we're gonna hop on over to our Foundry game right here. I made a test character. These are all the characters in my actual game that I've been discussing about, but this is just a test character for my video and purpose. Now, I decided instead of making a fighter like I would have done in my last one, I'm gonna make a ranger. So first things first, we're gonna pick our ancestry. When you click on Ancestry, you'll see it pops up all the different types of species and ancestry that, that you can play as. And you just pick which one you want and you click and you drag it over into the box. So in this case, I'm gonna click on Anandi. Drop it in. Boom, you can see it automatically adds languages, it adds the traits. And if I go over to my feet, it gives me the feet for my ancestry chain shape and fangs. And you can also over here on the, this part, click on it to actually pull up the description from the actual answer that you choose. You will have to go over to the details tab to see what your bonuses are because unfortunately, and this is a big part, ability boosts aren't automatically done based on what you choose. So you have to do these yourself. The languages as you see are there, the feats are there, but the ability boosts are not. So. In this case, if you see over here, we have Dexterity, Wisdom. So we get a, a plus two in Dexterity, plus two in Wisdom. Get a minus two in Calm. And then we get a free ability boost, which I'm gonna put in Strength. And that's our Ancestry done, basically. Heritage, I'm gonna not pick any Heritage, just because I kind of, none of these really make sense. You can, this is if you wanna like mix and match kind of few races together, like a Cobalt or Nani or something kind of like that, like that. Personally, I'm okay with just keeping it as is. Class. Like we said, I'm going to go Ranger. I'm going to put the Ranger class. I'm going to click and drag it. You can see in this case, it automatically picks what Hunter's Edge I want to be. That's kind of like your specialization for your Ranger. Flurry, Outwit, or Precision. To make things simple, I'm going to pick Precision. That's the easy one. It just does extra damage on the first hit and go over there. And you can see the minute I add it in Ranger, it automatically updated my, my health, my armor class and all that. However, keep in mind what I just mentioned previously, it does not boost up your key ability. So in this case, you're going to choose what your key ability should be. In my case, I'm going to go with Dex just because I'm going to make a Dex based Ranger for this video. So I get a plus two to my decks. Now, everything else you see, it automatically updated my my saving throws, my perception, all my proficiencies have automatically been updated to reflect my new class. And if you see, if I go over to the feet section, it added in Hunter's Edge, Hunt Prey, and all that. I'll get to these spots later. Then I'm going to go to my background. For the background, you can choose anything you want. I am going to pick to make things simple, I'm gonna pick Acrobat. And the reason why I'm picking Acrobat is mostly just because I know it's probably a dexterity build one and I wanna make a dex based ranger. So I'm just gonna put an Acrobatic Naughty Ranger. And again, it doesn't do the ability boost for you. So I'm gonna give myself a plus two to dex and then it's a plus two in anything I want. I am going to choose to put that one in con just to get rid of that minus one. And it gives me the steady balance skill feat. You can click on it. It'll pop up what that is. And you can see if I go back over to my feet section, it's already there in my 
skill feats. But with that, you have your ancestry done, your class done, your background done, and now we do our ability boost. So the way it works for that is you get four ability boosts when you when you make a character. They must be of different stats. So in my case, I'm gonna go Dex from one, Con for a second one, give me some health, strength because I may have to hit things. Never know. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go intelligence. Let's so give me some bit more. I guess I need to make any checks of that kind. And you have most of your stuff here, and you can see it has fangs, my unarmed attack. Chain shapes, hunt price already set in. Spells, I don't have any spells as of yet. Proficiencies, we'll get to in a moment. And feats. So there's two slots for feats. At level one, you get an ancestry feat and a class feat. The good thing about this is that when you click on the little plus sign here, it'll open up specifically to the feats only available to you right now. So these are the Anandi feats for level one. An ally gains the fighter condition. I can just kind of go through these and see which one I want. And I'm just gonna go through, I could do a web welcome one. Maybe maybe I'm natural web weaver, a naughty lore. I'm gonna do reassuring presence. That's a pretty that's a pretty nice one. And I'm just gonna click, drag, boom, done. Simple as that. Now it's in there. Gives me a reaction. It allows me to reduce a fighting condition by one from one of my allies. So that can help me be a bit, a bit more supportive. Class feet. Then you can kind of pick what you want here. I may do either Hunted Shot or Twin Takedown. We'll do Hunted Shot. Click it, a nice easy one. Gives me a little action ability there. In terms of proficiencies, now we see we're training Survival and Acrobatics and Nature. So the one thing it doesn't actually do, which is kind of strange, I will have to say that, is that it doesn't actually track your additional number of skills. So it's four plus your intelligence modifier. So my case has a plus one. So I get five more skills that I'm trained in and I have to do that myself basically. So I'm gonna give myself athletics. I'm gonna do a little thievery, a bit of a rogue type maybe. Looking at, at these stats, they're a bit rough cause we didn't put much into anything else. So maybe society, that's three. Stealth, four, and then we'll do crafting, five. So we have our five stats plus the ones that we got. We got acrobatics, nature, and survival from our background and from our class. And everything else we got trained from our class as well. And that is essentially the, the way. Last thing, just to do the deity. I can pick any deity I want. I am just going to scroll through. Let's pick Aerostale because that's a simple one to pick for rangers. There you go. Fills it in. And this information is kind of your generic like description about the character. I'm going to change my key ability over here to Dex. Don't forget this. This is important. Change my alignment. I'm going to go chaotic neutral just to make it a bit more different besides my chaotic good that I normally choose. And then we go to inventory. Inventory is a bit different to how inventory actually works. The way you kind of have to do it is you start with 150 silver, if you will. And I find that depending on what you add, it doesn't really work that well. So, so for instance, if I put Rangers, I think it's actually class, here we go, class kit Ranger. So this is the class kit. It costs four gold. Leather armor, dagger, adventures pack, and all that stuff. So if I pick that and I click and drag it, it automatically gives me some money, which I'm not, I'm not actually a fan of having this money here, to be honest, because there's money in the class kit, which is kind of weird. So what I do is, what I normally like to do is, instead of having the kind of strains loose, like the three 11 gold silver pieces, which actually is 14, oh, it actually fits perfectly. 14, yep, yeah, fits fine. Okay, so they actually fixed it. Or maybe it was just a, a weird thing. When I was playing this game and setting this game up with, with my character, with my players, they, for some reason, the goal just wouldn't line up perfectly. Here, it actually automatically thinks in its mind the 15 gold minus the price of this equals how much gold you have left. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna add We'll go longbow. Why not? So a longbow is six gold pieces. 
And then I'm going to need some arrows. That uh, comes in 10. I'm going to buy... We'll buy three of them. Why not? So we'll just buy some arrows. And we're going to, we're going to edit the quantity to, we'll say, 30 arrows. Just so that we can remove the three silver pieces. So now we have 30 arrows. We have a longbow. We have a dagger. We have leather armor. Uh, we have all our kind of typical adventuring stuff. The last thing I may want to look at potentially is just for flavors, any sort of quiver that I could buy. No, nothing like that. So with that, we have five gold. What you have to do, and this is important, if you're brand new to Foundry, specifically Foundry with Pathfinder, is this notion of these little symbols over here. You have to actually put your stuff on you. Oh, that's it's not going to work. And so right now you see my AC is 17. So that's because it's not counting. It's kind of my plus four from my decks and my proficiency bonuses. But with my leather armor, worn as armor, buffs it up by one. So now it's an 18. I want to equip my longbow. And then I'm going to make sure that those are also equipped. And then when you go to my actions, you'll see longbow here. Dagger, unarmed things. It's very important. And this is very, very important because the first time you do this, you will probably screw it up. This over here says no ammo. You must put a consumable ammo type in here. If you leave it at no ammo, and when you go to make an attack, you'll watch. I'll make I'll, I'll make a I'll make an attack right here. It says no ammunition is assigned to the longbow. It will not roll the attack for you unless you have ammunition here. So drop it down to arrows, and then you're good to go. And that's it. That's how you make a character. We made a character in about 15 minutes, give or take me explaining some things and going over some things. It's very quick. It's very easy. Everything's here, set up. Make sure you change your HP up to your max. It doesn't do it automatically for you. And you're good. Everything else is there. You have your actions. They're ready to go. It's all tied to your token. So when you make your token, everything, all these actions will be tied to it. Inventory is set up. Proficiencies are set up. Feats all set up nice and easy for you. And you have a little page for your biography as well if you need to. So with that, we've made a character. Showing you guys how to set up your character. Last video, we talked a bit about how to kind of Set up the game, kind of get your players ready for session zero. This video, we talked about making your character. And then next video, we'll be actually talking about the, in my case, the actual game I've been playing, which is the Menace Under Atari scenario, which is basically the beginner box for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. My experiences for it, my kind of thoughts and prep that goes into it, even though Foundry does most of the actual logistical prep like making the maps and the tokens and all that for me the kind of prep that goes into my mind of what am i thinking for when my players go to this room or this space so with that if you guys have been enjoying these videos please let me know make sure to head down in the comments leave a comment saying you like it ask any questions about pathfinder 2e i'm always available to answer any questions and while you're down to be sure to hit that subscribe button it helps a lot when you're on the road to 1,000 subscribers to try and make this channel into a monetizable channel. It's a big, big dream of mine. So hopefully we can get there. We just recently passed 400, so we're on the way. And I hope to see you guys in my next Pathfinder 2E video. Thank you guys.